up everyone Jacob here with Team Kitchen Fable here also with Steven and uh, we're going to be live commentating a game between Chad and Hasiel, two other members of Team Kitchen Fable. Chad's going to be playing Shane and Hasiel is going to be playing Lexi and this is going to be a game of Classic Constructed. Yep, sure is. So I think Hasiel is going to be on Ice Lexi today and Chad is playing... Um, a chain list that's pretty similar to some ones we've seen from recent nationals, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll see some frostbites and we'll see some soul shackles and go from there. Yeah, I think earlier in the season we might have seen some consideration about what kind of Lexi this might have been. But I think with uh, the recent showings of the ice Lexi, I think it's more obvious what kind of build uh, we're going to see here coming out. So they're going to be rolling off here soon. All right, here's the roll. Yeah, perfect. So chain Six, wins. I... Are you going first or second here as chain? Oh yeah, I think you definitely want to go first, getting those early soul shackles in. Um, oh, certainly. The Lexi player can do some cheeky plays depending on how aggro the chain goes with uh, Voltaire putting an extra card in uh, Arsenal, therefore getting a very early five card hand. But uh, I don't think there's going to be much reprise here from this chain. It's already looking like a pretty aggressive hand and pretty good for setup. Yeah, that's always something I'm worried about with Lexi going second. If if I don't put on enough pressure, they can definitely just get that Voltaire card into Arsenal quick and put the pressure on even harder. Mm -hmm. I think we might see that here because it's really tempting to just uh, maybe pitch to play Pocket the Feather Walkers, get a Quicken Token, and then show a card. Uh, yeah. Or actually, I'm mad. We can just shackle. I think we're going to see Ghostly Visit into Flock. I think it's going to be a really aggressive first turn play. And oh, yeah. on top of that, pretty good setup. Yeah, if I don't we think... see a shackle, a quicken token, and an arsenal after turn one, and maybe even lease a couple damage through, that's huge. It is. Yeah, because I don't think Chad is going to want to, or sorry, Hasiel wants to be blocking with a the three of a kind. So, we already see two damage leaking. Or not. I think they might have taken back. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, he leaks two All on right. the first one and on the second one. Yep. That's pretty huge. I think there could have been some merit to blocking, over blocking with that Ice Quake just to prevent as much leak. But I think he might be trying to guarantee he has Ice cards in his hands. Yep. And then he gets rewarded by not having a single card with Ice Fusion in his hand now. But uh, it still could be pretty aggressive for, especially with the reload ability. Chain is a pretty aggressive deck that also doesn't want to block. So one of these special on-hit effects will go through. But it seems like he decides to take maybe the slower route here. Playing Ice Quake and hoping to get some arrows. See how it pans out. Hmm. It was a pretty good hand, especially Sleep Dart, to stop the opposing chain from, uh, you know, trying to get you lose that hero ability. And that this feels like general, a very good draw. yeah, yeah, this general disruption is pretty good. Um, I think we would have liked to see another arrow, uh, be played to really kind of hone in on that Ice Quake ability. Uh, but I think still threatening to make him lose the hero ability plus a Frostbite token. And then arsenaling an ice card for next turn to continue the disruption is still pretty decent. Yeah, so this is coming in. Uh, I'm not sure if he chose plus one or go again on Voltaire, but it's going to be for at least eight. And if it yep. hits, he's going to create a frostbite token and Chain will lose his hero ability if the sleep dart hits. So oh. that's a pretty chunky attack. Yeah, and noticing the Chain's hand, actually, they got two no blocks here, so... I think we're definitely going to see it hit unless uh, the chain player wants to remove some of the armor. Uh, yeah. But I, be I believe this will most likely have the plus one since there's no lead up to this attack. So it's going to be a, definitely going to be for nine here. Yeah, it's yep. a pretty early time to commit to using armor. But in these aggro matchups, sometimes they need to just keep the momentum. So we'll see if that's what he does. Mm -hmm. But And then chain is a hero that kind of benefits for the game going a little longer. So also, I also wouldn't be surprised if uh, they just don't use armor and just uh, maybe take an off turn, build up a shackle, and then just... Oh, they can't build up a shackle if they get hit by Sleep Dart, but maybe that's what they'll do. But we'll see what they shackle up as well, because uh, this hand is really awkward. 
Yeah, yeah, that was an awkward one, and he did choose plus one on Voltaire. I think I should have known that because the last card was Ice Quake. That wouldn't have yeah. benefited from having go again. But yeah, Hossiel is happy to end with an Ice card. He'll give him a Frostbite for sure on next turn, and Chain starts with a two card hand, so that's a little bit rough. But we'll see what he draws off the Gorganian Tome. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's uh, oh, yep, that's not the actually actually wow. We're we're gonna see the strength of the new Rosetta Thorn here if he decides to do it. But he's got to be able to play Shackle Up, play Soul Reaping, Banishing, the Invert Existence, getting a resource, and then swinging with Rosetta for 2 and 2. Still a pretty good turn of 10 damage, even off a pretty mediocre 2 card hand looking, but uh, we just see the power of that. Of chain. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely a, a pretty good 2 card hand. Pretty good mm -hmm. time to draw off of the Gorganian Tome. I would say it's pretty good. Anything else would have been fine. Maybe another attack. I think the worst thing that he could have seen maybe was another non-attack action that could have like maybe made it so it just swings the thorn for two. Um, I would have guessed that if he got like something really bad, maybe just played Invert Existence just to deal two damage. Um, but in this case, we're just seeing a straight six. So we'll see what... Uh... Oh, decide to take the six too, I think. So Hasiel's going to take all the damage. Wow. Yeah, so that's 10 damage off of starting with a two-card hand, which is a pretty good rate. Is my math mm -hmm. right on that? Uh, 10 damage, 6. Yeah, 6, 2, and 2. Yep, that is 10. And it does take 1 to Blood Dead, but I think it's a small price to pay for that turn. Oh, yeah. Uh, and let's see what Aziel decides. There's a lot of lines of play here between either playing the, yeah, and the, play the channel like Frigid it is. That is always a good way to start it. Yeah, so that's uh, really going to gum up Chain's turns, even if uh, Hasiel doesn't do anything big, his stuff is all going to cost one more, his cards and activated abilities. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a little expensive. awkward. It is a little awkward between having extra resources to play this Chilling Ice Vein or the Ice Quake, uh, so it's just going to be a little bit low on resources to do everything this turn, mm -hmm. but then we're going to see the power of New Horizons really kind of kick in here. Uh, getting that second arsenal slot going to be really useful. Um, you hate to see this uh, card pitch, this uh, yeah, the lightning press, but you know I think continuing to put some pressure into more uh, frostbite tokens on the chain player is going to be pretty good. Let's see, oh, oh, he's interested. He's going to pass, pass the there. turn. Yeah. What do you think about playing out the Ice Quake and the Chilling Ice Vein and then arsenaling the Channel Lake Frigid for another time? Because you still finish his turn with at least one Frostbite. Uh, and then threatening and then too. the Chilling Ice Vein mm. attack is hitting him. That could have been another yeah. line. That could have been a definitely... It probably might have been a better line. To, it threatens two because he can then also fuse the Chilling yeah, Ice Vein. Yeah, the Lightning Press behind one. it as well. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so uh, yeah, you know, that could have been the better play, but... Uh, I think this one's just fine as well, keeping the disruption going. I uh, won't have to be able to flip up a card, but uh, looking at the resources right now, it's going to be a pretty good double arrow turn, uh, threatening a lot of disruption. Um, but again, also two no blocks, so we might see Shane just continue on and getting a pretty big lead. Yeah. Shane's first sure. action is going to cost two extra. Looks like it's going to oh, be a Minoism. Yeah. Only has one Frostbite, so yeah, it's just one. But Yeah, one Frostbite oh, you're right. channel like Frigid, so... Oh, you're actually right. Yeah, one floating, cast the Minoism. Gives his next uh -huh. attack plus three. Yep. The... Mm -hmm. So and let's see. Non attacks through. Turn on his Rosetta. We... Yeah, we might see some pretty good value off of this B-Little here. Uh, showing off another card, and if uh, Chad build his deck pretty well. It's going to have a blue uh, belittle in there, or blue middleism. It's going to give him the, all the resources he needs to do every single thing in this in this turn. And I still, mm -hmm. even in Channel Lake Frigid Lock, going to be able to do pressure. But no, I think it's going to go for a more clean or low low edge play. Maybe wanting to keep the... Uh, we would have had to pitch the plunder run to do that, but maybe he wants to keep the plunder run for another turn. Um, and I think it's going to pay off for him. Yeah, sometimes when you're taxed like this, it seems like you're just being coerced into doing a setup turn. Just maybe get a couple points of damage through, but rather just getting your arsenal ready. Yeah. Oh, it's even going to make a rune chant. 
which costs three. I think right. it's going to take that one back because uh, mm -hmm. that's a lot of for one rune chant and really wanting to keep a card in arsenal here. So yeah, just going in with the ghostly visit for four to kind of end the turn here, and maybe play the inverted. That costs two as well. So maybe playing the inverted existence. Oh, I probably can't because of channel like Bridget, huh? Yeah, and I think shouldn't he have one floating right now because the ghostly visit should cost two. They two for Minoism, one for Bounding, Demigon, two for Ghostly Visit. Yeah, so I should have one floating. I think they, they figured it out. Oh, yeah. Or did he play the Invert? You usually might want to like type it in them for them and just double check that the math is correct. Yeah, we're just double checking that the math is right. Two, yeah. Yeah, these cards out here would cost five. The invert would have costed two. He would have only had one floating. Yep. I hope they're reading chat. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like they're discussing everything themselves. Yeah, they got six resources. Yeah, it just mentioned that like invert would have cost two. Okay. Oh, so he decided to yep. play the invert by pitching the little. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Could be some argument to just leaving the, the invert, invert and banish, yeah. playing the Rosetta and arsenaling the belittle potentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's just um, a tricky thing about all, all like both of these heroes, I think, and just Fab in general. Like, there's just so many different lines of play you can take. Yeah. Uh, so it's hard, almost a little bit hard to say sometimes what is just objectively correct. Uh, there's just there are, there are good plays in general, but uh, everything is just as long as you're. I think in the aggro match, you just want to leak as much damage as possible, and yeah. and maybe take a as less as possible as well. But yeah, here's he gonna see. Certainly leak damage. We see Hasiel on 14 health after that turn. So even without the even with the channel like frigid and the one frostbite, he pushed some damage. Hasiel went down to 14. Uh, all it takes is one off turn for Hasiel, and he might be in trouble. But we'll see what he can do with this four cards plus two arsenal hand. Yeah, unfortunately, he doesn't have the ability to fuse this Blizzard Ball with to put another Frostbite token to him. Uh, so it's just going to be one from that attack. And then when... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he chose go again with that one. And yeah. he might be playing... Yeah, he might be pitching to... Yep, to draw that Chilling Ice down. Though that's going to threaten another Frostbite token. And it looks like with all the blues, or look at all the extra resources on the chain's hand, they're just going to shrug off those frostbite tokens and still going to do monster turns. Yeah, and at this point, chain sees there's two non ice cards pitched, and Hossi only has one card left. There's no way the channel like yeah. fridge is staying around another time, so that makes his math a lot simpler for the next turn. Means he can do all his pay all the taxes on the first card and then be free for the rest of the time. Exactly. Uh, it's going to take into consideration a little bit here what uh you know chad banishes because it looks like going to be a pretty weak attack overall maybe just playing flock to set up uh but if he gets a really good attack off these uh three banishes then we might still see something something good yeah Let's see and these new chain lists are running a pretty low ratio of blood deaths and i think we saw that here no blood deaths were banished i don't know exactly yeah. what the ratio is but it's nowhere near uh, what they used to be, I think it was like over 50% in uh, the Monarch meta. I don't know if that's correct, but yeah, we can't yeah, really rely on these these blood deaths anymore. It's a little bit rough out here. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit rough. Out. Gotta play oh, cards man. from our hand. Yeah, we have to. Uh, so yeah, so speaking of uh, weak turns, it looks like it might just be shackling into... Flock of the Featherwalkers, maybe Shackling into Captain Skull into Flock of the Feather or Nimblism. Yeah, definitely going to get an attack in here. Yep. Yep, mm -hmm. so just a small setup turn. So maybe giving some leeway yeah. to the Lexi player um, that did Arsenal a Ice Quake again last turn, if I'm not mistaken. The and Arsenal looking at the hands. Press. Oh, Lightning Press. So that was a little bit rough, but I think, yeah. Oh, this is going to be... Yeah, it even has a Tunic resource, so it's going to be yeah. definitely a multi-arrow turn. Maybe we block with one arrow here, kind of like prevent some chip damage, and it's possible to go something along the lines of 
uh, bolt and shot into frost fang. Yeah, this is all going to be really disruptive. So we'll see. It's going to have to come up with something because a health is not a lot. Yeah, he's got to present some really relevant effects here uh, for Chain mm -hmm. to consider even blocking anything, it looks like. Mm -hmm. And uh, the captain's call is going to start a pretty good turn for him next. So Asiel yep. flips over the lightning call. press. He's going to give his next arrow go again. Mm -hmm. Loads a remorseless and shoots it. So this means yep. he can't play defense reactions from Arsenal. A little bit irrelevant for Chain. But it does mean that if it hits next turn, every single one of Chain's actions, action cards, is going to ping himself for one. So that's mm -hmm. pretty relevant for these go-wide aggro heroes as well. Yep. But this uh, this might not be enough. If if the Chain could decide to just take this, or maybe even use the Husk and just shrug off the attack, yeah. And they just come back and just threaten like insane amounts of damage and over and make make the Lexi player want to block. Because uh, yeah, it just maybe might have been a really unfortunate game and where Lexi didn't get all the disruption pe pieces to go through. Um, yeah. Well, you know the game's not over yet, but it's looking a little rough. Okay. Maybe yeah, deliberating the remorse. Yeah, Chain's probably just doing the math on. If he could even possibly die to remorseless pings, maybe because it, it's just damage. Ultimately, it's not gumming up yep. his turn at all, and he has such a life lead that, um, yeah, damage you know what, what just not matter. Mm -hmm. You know what could be actually really relevant from for the remorseless if he takes enough damage, he might be able to ping himself down till the husk explodes on his next turn, uh, and that might be a very relevant thing that could again bring the Lexi back into the game. That's oh, true, so and we might just see a husk block right now in order to prevent himself from breaking his own husk in the first place. Because mm -hmm. Hasiel's got this lightning press staring him in the face, too, so... Yeah. Fortunately, he doesn't have the resources to play every single card in hand. Um, there could have been some consideration about the way that Hasiel played the hand. Uh, maybe to trigger the reload from... Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, there's a the husk. Or maybe not. Like th th There's a lot of different li lines of play that we can do here. Decides not to play the Lightning Press, too. Um, yeah. So keeping that there, just in case. Ooh, Sometimes very the awkward. Just being live on board, like that Lightning Press sitting there means that it's just an extra thing Chain has to think about. Mm -hmm. So all of Hasiel's next on-hit effects are going to be a little bit more live. But you hit one Banish, Howl from Beyond on Chain's Blood Debts. Is this going to affect his turn? What do you think? Oh yeah, definitely. I think he now he has. Do you have any extra resources? Yeah, he has a blue plunder run and then a captain call an arsenal. We got one resource. It's going to be it's a lot of red cards in hand, but definitely going to threaten a lot. And I'm just a little bit worried because Lexi just drew two no blocks. Uh, so something is coming through, and every little point of damage really matters when you're at eight health. Yeah, this is very true. Oh, and a hand has a quicken token, so really just making use of every single inch here uh, that he has. Yeah, keeping the half will be out because it's cost two resources. Yeah, that's that's smart. It's going to be yeah. a very threatening turn. See, maybe unhollowed into unhollowed into a sword swing for two. Definitely still has Captain Call uh, to make that a uh, rift bind even bigger, actually, as well. Yeah. Very gonna be very hard. There we go. The two block perch grapplers. Yeah, Asiel is just uh -huh. hedging his bets. His his only out is if he can keep some cards and block with the equipment and live. But I think he's gonna have to block with some cards. Uh -huh. These are good cards, and I I also would hate to see like something like an endless arrow go, especially with the two lightning presses available. <laughs> um, actually, Asiel's gonna have a really tough time. I wonder if you can see the heads of play of maybe playing the Lightning Press on one of Shane's attacks so that he doesn't have that in Arsenal. That way he can free up the Arsenal slot. Uh, oof. But yeah, that's for five. So he has to block with uh, has to block with both cards in hand. So it's really not looking good. Yeah, unless he can't really block with New Horizons because it just breaks both of the... Both of the Arsenal cards, but then again, he might be okay with that. Maybe blocking with New Horizons and, whew, yeah, with New Horizons and 
I don't know. What do you think he could shoot block with? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like he he needs this endless arrow. He yeah. I don't know what he's going to be able to do here, but that that mentioning that lightning press play is something that I, as a person who has not played much Lexi, didn't <laughs> realize. But wow, that is spicy. So he can play lightning press on one of Chad's previous mm-hmm. combat chain links just yep. to free up the arsenal slot, so he can actually shoot the arrow off. Uh, that's pretty spicy. Yeah, you. I promise me, you only make that mistake once of arsenaling a really bad card like lightning press like yeah. that. Especially when you're in a limited event and you don't have new horizons. <laughs> uh, yep, letting go of the tunic here so he can go down to one to keep the. So it seems like, uh, yeah, it seems like Hasiel is overvaluing more the frost lock here. Although I am worried that he might not be able to play it. I think he might see the writing about the double arsenal. How he does not have one available right now. Yeah. So, um, but let's see how he plays it out. Definitely going to be flipping over the Frost Fang, no matter yeah. what. But yeah, it, I don't see any way that he can play any of his Frost frost Lock or extra cards. I think they might be talking about it right now and realizing the issue. Yeah. Because um, he yeah, also can't, even can't play Lightning light. Press the Frost Fang because it costs mm-hmm. two. That is correct. So yeah, playing out. So it's going to be a really mucked up, a really mucked up uh, Arsenal Zone over here. So. Yeah. Next turn, barring anything insane, or, or you know, just straight up dying, we'll see maybe a New Horizons block to survive. Yeah, I think right now, based on the block that he did, it was pretty much the only play right now to play that Frost Fang. Um, so it is a little bit disruptive. It will at least remove one card from Chain's hand, uh, yeah. but it might not be enough. But we'll see again. Still, still getting a very good ratio of blue cards in hand. Uh, and then still going up for five blood deck cards going off the top of the deck. So still a lot, a lot of threat going on here. Yeah. I mean, even if he misses all five of his blood deck cards, he's got a blue in there. He's got two attacks. Mm-hmm. He's got a non-attack. So he takes oh, yes. five oh. and discards Flock of the Featherwalkers here. Yep. And then gets the, the Chalk Charmers coming to play for the first time here. Uh, pinging extra damage so they don't have so Hasiel is not arsenaling another double lightning, uh, press. lightning press. Oof. That would be rough. Look at all these blood deck cards. Yep. Look at all these not blood deck cards. That's true. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure which has put it in the graveyard, but uh, I guess it doesn't matter. There's no uh, really way to recover them, at least in this chain list, I believe. No remembers or anything like that. Uh, we'll make sure that it becomes clean. It doesn't matter right now, but we'll make sure it's clean later. Uh, but and if anything were to happen with the discard pile, I don't think it will. But, oof. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think Chain really interacts with the graveyard all too much. In this mm-hmm. list. Mm-hmm. Gonna start with the Shadow Verser. Two damage built in. Go again because he uh, banished a Rift Bind. Mm-hmm. And even though it's two damage, it's still lethal. So. Asiel is going to end with very few, if if any, cards in hand. Yep. And there we go. Here's the New Horizons block. He loses a Lightning Press. Technically, it gets lost at the, uh, when the combat chain closes, but it would close right now, so that makes that's fine. And then, yep, playing the Howl from Beyond. Yeah, and then it's going to be able to Shackle here. And this is going to be a big attack. It still has one floating for Rosetta Thorn. So it's this 3, 6, 7. There's a 7 attack turn. One floating can just... Uh, well, I suppose it's 2 arcane damage whether he uses Invert or Rosetta. So huh? I think we're going to see lethal here. Oh no, my good friend. Lethal is not on the table right now. The, our good friend, the Chuck Charmers, has Spell Void too. <laughs> And ah, I'm sure that that's fine. Uh, <laughs> no, it's fine. It's something that gets forgotten about all the time. Uh, I think it's definitely important. Yeah, the Rosetta Thorn swing is going to be the, the one of choice. Losing that, losing the card in hand. But it's just going to be in a slow, slow death or just a fast death as his next turn comes up. Uh, so if but he yeah. doesn't attack with Riftbind there, could he have just inverted and Rosetta? And that would have been lethal with the two Arcane and the two Arcane? Yep, 
and actually just starts his turn and immediately just plays Invert Existence and just yeah. kills him. But you're right, he could have done it last turn. If it were some kind yeah. of threat to die, I'm sure that he would have done that, but it looks like just being a little bit patient there and just playing the Invert Existence as soon as the turn starts, not giving Hasiel any chance to like get him back into this game. Uh, yeah, the GG there. Yeah, so that was a rough one. We saw lots of disruption come down from Lexi early. We saw uh, Channel Lake Frigid. We saw quite a few Frostbites go across the board, and Chain just pushed through. I think this Chain list is smart. It's got enough blues in there. It knows that Ice Lexi is a threat in this meta because it's targeting Briar as well. So the Chain came prepared. He could pay for all of his stuff. Um and just punish a couple inefficient blocks and just go run away with the game. Yep. Yeah, as I, I think uh, mentioned earlier, uh, Lexi really needs to disrupt in multiple avenues, not just Channel Lake Frigid. It needs to pretty much throw in two Frostbites a turn to even try and get the chain to just slow down a little bit. But if you let chain have all these turns and get up to six shackles, it's just really going to run over you. Yeah, so... And I think we're going to see another another game be played. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll let the players know and we'll watch a second match. Yeah, for sure. Maybe... Yeah, go for a second one. Perfect. Maybe Lexi might want to go first just to deny that, uh, you know, first turn shackle. Because Lexi going first... Lexi doesn't, you know, barring some really good uh, stuff, we'll go in second, they can set up an extra card hit a five card hand, go in second, but on the first turn as well, they can do some shenanigans where they attack, you know, put a, an arrow in arsenal and put a card down so they have a six card hand, and then uh, blocking as minimally as possible can maybe threaten a lot of frostbite hits. Yeah, Voltaire just makes your turn one versus two choice so flexible, and mm -hmm. honestly, they both seem pretty good, so that's a pretty nice strength of that weapon. Yep, not upset. Yeah, it, it, who knew? Instant speed, so good. Yeah, I wonder if they're just going to roll off again. Yep. Well, let's see. They, they get the chance. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, that's pretty bad. I wonder. Lexi will probably want to go first. And, uh... Oh. Hmm. That's a good first turn, too. Especially with the lightning press back up. Alright. Get to Arsenal. Pitching the Winter's Bite too was really interesting. Would have pitched maybe the Blizzard Board to have the uh, the Winter's Bite down, but I think so that's fine. Well. End the turn with the Winter's Bite in Arsenal? Yeah, Winter's Bite, uh, you know, that puts a Frostbite, makes Chain lose a card from the hand. Uh, so I think... Uh, putting that Winter's Bite. Winter's Bite is a very good card. It does kind of everything you want to be doing against not just Chain, but also Briar or any other aggro, uh, you know, matchup that wants to keep as many cards in hand as possible. Um, this Lightning Press might not be as uh, useful too as uh, maybe the Lexia wanted to do because they're going to overblock based on the awkward 3 2 2 card hands, two block cards I have available. Still going to push in some damage. It's still going to push in the on hit effect, so not the worst in the world. Yeah, even then, Chain's just uh, filtering his hand out. So, mm -hmm. he gets three more draws, and he starts with a red Minnowism, so... Mm -hmm. Good card to be keeping. Yep. I guess a good benefit of keeping an arrow in Arsenal at the end of the turn, it, get, it opens up the avenue of just paying three resources to flip that card, shoot an arrow, and then shoot the other arrow available, so you get a multi-arrow turn. So I can see the benefit of both keeping the Winter's Bite and that one, and that card. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess, personally, maybe I would have picked the Winter's Bite. Uh, wow. <laughs> Chain with the whole red hand. Uh, still might be a pretty it. good turn of setup. <laughs> I get to see it. A little Chain hate over here. <laughs> oh, man. It could be anything. It could be a Command and Conquer. Definitely want to be making a Shackle here. I think they might have, like, go back, make sure that it gets that going first. Definitely. Um, but I think I think Lexi's gonna be seeing, yeah, and then it minimizes the remorseless as well, just playing the command and conquer. Uh, yep, and we're gonna see that. So we're just gonna take one damage from the big remorseless first turn play. Yeah, all things and... considered, is it's not the worst thing to do with four reds in your hand. He still ends with an arsenal. He still forces a couple cards out of Lexi's hand. So. Mm -hmm. 
And I wonder if he might want to do so. Since uh, maybe he just takes 6. Because it's still a nice turn of hitting up with Remorseless again. And for like 9 as well. Getting the Remorseless hit effect as well. Uh, yeah. It's kind of odd. Because being the disruption deck. Sometimes you want to like save your health. And uh, and not, do, not think about damage too much. But uh, it might be the right play in this situation. Because... Other than that, we might see a double arrow block just to attack. Huh. But we're gonna see we're gonna see what Hasiel decides to do. Okay. I think he's considering doing two blocks and just throwing out a fused blizzard bolt and ending with an mm -hmm. ice card in his arsenal. Maybe he's valuing his life total here. Mm-hmm. Yep. Maybe he's thinking that that is going to be disruptive enough. Mm -hmm. Uh and they could be right. Uh, yeah, and then again, you're right, valuing the life total a little bit more. Yeah, to next two. Yeah, and that is exactly what we're gonna see. Because we're both showing the ice quake. Perfect. So that is gonna be a four damage, a really weird thresh, a really great threshold, uh, for the game. Or it's kind of the sweet spot where you want to be. Most cards block for three, so. Yeah, especially uh, with these on hit effects. Force him to use his equipment inefficiently or or mm -hmm. uh, have a frostbite on his next turn. And Chain's looking at another four reds over here. <laughs> so. Yeah, so pretty pretty good here for, or pretty bad. But, like, I think he's going to just take it again. Look, yeah, he's just going to, like, block with his armor, which you're happy to see, so it doesn't get affected later in the game, doesn't get used later in the game. Uh, but I think Chain's just going to be really happy just throwing out Command and Conquerors back to back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and knows that the the ice quake is arsenaled. Yeah, and then one of the weaknesses of not having a weapon of Lexi, every card you block with for three in your deck is gonna be a arrow card. So and you really don't have a limit of one uh limited of those. And you wanna have a mix of non attack and arrow attack, so um we'll see. Yeah, so we had the chain switches block. I think this is so you can keep the minnowism in hand to reveal the flock of the feather walkers and then mm -hmm. arsenal it after the fact. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah so still, still a really gets strong turn. Eight damage. He gets a quicken token. He's gonna have go again on his first attack next turn. So, and then rolling back a little, maybe to make this shackle, or maybe uh, strategically did not want to make the second shackle. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe wants to take it slow, but I think making the shackle every turn, especially in this disruptive mashup, is what you want to be doing. Because the more cards you don't have, you want to keep a lot of blues in hand and have a lot of attacks and. The banish zone to be able to play it out. Yeah, definitely. Just blocking for three. Yep, because you're not going to be able. One of the really thing awkward about the ice lexi deck and Voltaire is that you don't really get a lot of opportunities to do a double arrow attack turn, uh, mostly because all your arrows cost one. Uh, ice lex, uh, lightning lexi can really offset this by having a mix of one cost and zero cost attack arrows, and just using a blue to shoot two arrows. Uh, but it, ice lexi generally wants to go a little bit taller. Let's see which arrow they choose to uh, to hit them up with. It looks like it's going to be... Yeah, and they do have Tunic as well, so they're going to have an extra resource. They're going to be able to do everything in this turn. Play the Ice Quake, uh, play, put, put the Blizzard Board in, plus one, shoot it, and fuse. It's going to be a nice uh, nine damage with threat of two Frostbite token. Chain already has one. And I think Shane's luck continues to be the red thread lined, another red oh, can, so it's gonna be a really slow turn. Shane's next hand is gonna look like it's a Bravo deck. He's probably gonna chunk <laughs> of blues coming up. Oh yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> see yeah, so see what happens. You love to see the the Lexi deck is at <laughs> oh, least performing good. what he wants to do. He's shooting off arrows, ice fusing them, and ending with ice cards in hand. Or arsenal yeah. rather. So mm -hmm. Yeah, Chad Chain's just not cuts, his, cuts his losses and uh, blocks a bunch. He wasn't doing much with the hands. Yep. Uh, kind of odd there. I don't know what happened there about what... Maybe uh, realized that the chain... Had to start. Instead yep. of shackling, I believe. Yep. I believe we can rewind that, or we can just make sure that it's the leftmost car that gets... Uh, so I think he just missed one shackle. And I believe it, it shouldn't have been the Invert Existence. We might want to roll that back, or it should be okay. 
Um, oh, so I think they may they might have like maybe we can let her ride at this point. <laughs> lots of yeah, actions uh, have happened. Lots, lots of actions have happened. <laughs> also, especially I think they're just figuring out that they could, that chain could not have shackled because the shackle cost one with ah. the frostbite token. So that's why he stayed at two. I believe mm-hmm. that shackle also was made from last turn that they wanted to like maybe rewind a little bit because yeah. uh, the last turn was just nimbleism into uh, the flock of the feather walkers. So. Yeah, so staying at two shackles here, also very good. Uh, and let's see what uh, we got over here. We got ice. Glue. Oh, that's uh, that's a dominate one, right? Let's um, draw an extra card. So this now with a bunch of cards in hand, this one is definitely going to be a turn where uh, they're going to be shooting multiple attacks, threatening a lot of disruption. Already a frostbite on the chain's side. Yeah. So it looks like chain did not pay for polar blast. So flake out got dominate. Um, Asiel didn't technically have to fuse there, but uh, there's nothing wrong with double dominate. <laughs> and, uh, so this flake out's going to be for five dominate. It looks like he chose go again. Uh, oh, it mm-hmm. looks like Chain also took the damage on that. And uh, we got a sleep mm-hmm. dart coming in after the fact. Yep. So sleep dart's going to be very good, shutting down that ability. Uh, yeah, a little bit of interesting sequencing here for sure, but sleep dart definitely going to be one of the disruption pieces that Shane will want to block out uh, if they really want to put the pedal to the metal with the multiple attacks. Uh, we'll see what they choose. They'll have Quicken too, so they're they're not upset about this, but it's going to be something. It's going to be yeah. some disruption. Um, yeah, it's been quite a few turns here keeping Shane at two shackles. So the Lexi player must be very happy, especially after the last game. Yeah, so yeah. Chain just might not have much of a turn at all if he lets this Sleep Dart connect. So he's going to block it out with one card and equipment. Save mm-hmm. his Husk for a later date, maybe when he's closer to 13 health. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's going to roll the dice and see what he draws with Art of War, maybe. Oh yeah, Art of War is going to be... Yeah, Art of War is such a good card. As everybody knows, Art of War is so good in Chain. It's letting him so go even more wide than he usually does. It does everything it wants to do. Hitting the Shadow Verse or Banish is also fairly welcome. Yep. The Art of War is going to cost two. And would be surprised if it chose Go Again with already having so many Go Again available with Chain and the Quicken Token. So it's probably going to be a Banish and then plus one. Yep, and then we see the dice representing it. Okay. Yep. And yeah, not a bad hand. Wow, yeah. Very yeah, very good hand. It still technically has one resource floor floating, so we're gonna see definitely a big flurry of attacks here. You can pretty much play everything, including the invert existence. If I'm doing my math correctly. That's gonna be this is gonna be pretty good. And has a mineral wisdom available as well. Yeah, this is gonna be fantastic. Yep, Bounding Demigon. Played a non-attack action just to make sure that that can be played. Yeah, so this is huge. This is a Bounding Demigon for 7. Mm-hmm. And it uh, has to go again from the quick end. Actually, it's got to be 8 because of the plus 1 from Art of War as well. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yep. So it's going to be a big turn, big, big turn. Uh, let's see. Uh, what will have to hit back with if he chooses to take some damage here? Just really has Frost Fang in the arsenal, so you know it could be uh, is Tunic is going to be at one. It's going to have one resource, three resources. It's going to be it's going to be quite rough. It could sh- next turn could be something like an endless arrow shot into a the Frost Fang, yeah. and it looks like. But I believe Hasiel should block with at least one or two cards in his hand because he's not going to be able to play everything. Uh, because Frost Fang does cost two. Yeah, I but definitely agree with that. When you get this Frost Fang in the arsenal and it costs two, it, it doesn't have go again, and you don't often have a way to give it go again. It makes your turn a little bit awkward the next time around. Mm-hmm. We see Hossiel taking some damage. Maybe he's uh, just waiting to see what that last card was. Yep. Yeah, so he double-checked everything. Now we can see everything come into view. Uh as I mentioned, there's just a flurry of attacks here. Going to be on Hollow Rights, putting a card at the bottom of the deck. 
going to be able to play the Invert Existence, and then on top, going to be able to still attack with Rosetta Torn. Just a casual... Oof, what do we got here? Uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then plus 5, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 22 damage turn. Chain still has it. Chain, chain lives. <laughs> <laughs> Surely. Yeah, and I think that was a good block from Haciel. He knows he's going to have to block some stuff, but he also knows Chain's got lots of things behind it. None of these attacks were presenting any on-hit damage, so in the off chance mm -hmm. that the last thing had a relevant effect, then he can at least mm -hmm. save the card to block that one. Yep, that is that is that is definitely very smart. And I think the cards that he kept are going to be uh, a multi-threaded approach here. Going to be flipping the card, attacking with endless arrow, and then shooting the frost fang, uh, and then able to keep a card at the, in the arsenal. Because the only way that Lex is going to get into the game here is this. It's going to be continued. It's, it's a little odd because it's not really a blocking strategy to make sure that the opponent is giving you less damage. It's a strategy in which you got to take a little bit to like deal a little bit. Do a lot of disrupt. Yeah. Or do a lot in this case. going to be wanting to do a lot. A lot of back and forth. Mm -hmm. And in this case you're going to be generally quite happy depending on what uh, gets chosen here for the it's definitely going to be go again. Uh, so, hmm. It's going to be very interesting if Chad lets it hit. Because it does go back to hand. And then it's going to give Hasiel even more options. Uh, you know, Chad could think, oh, I'm so far ahead. I could just let this hit, just get it back in hand. Uh, yeah, yeah, weighing the options of using creepers. Yeah, it's got a lot of options. Just this change is really hitting hard. Oh, wow. Using the Creepers to block. Yep. Doesn't want this shenanigans. I mean, the threat of Endless Arrow is, is real. Yeah, so not bad. Chain is still at three shackles. This, this is it. This might be an opening. Chain is still at three shackles. You already took one card out of their hand. You're going to 100% take at least one other with Frostfang. Yeah, because Chain would not probably want to block, so it's a free five damage. Okay. This is an avenue, because the chain, you know, depending on the shackles, of course, can make it a huge turn, but... Whew. Yeah, we'll see what he shackles, but with these blood debt ratios, we might even see no hits. Uh -huh. So, looks like he's going to choose to pitch, instead of discarding, pitch this Mavri in Skies. Yep. Otherwise, his turn may be a little bit lackluster, but... Okay. Mm, there's Blizzard. Didn't see that one last game. Blizzard's pretty good for shutting down the turn. And there it is! The no hits. Promise 3 Shackle, no hit. That might be something super simple, uh, like making a rune chant, or just attacking for 2. Yeah, that's still fair. You know, setting up the turn. Attacking for 2, go again. Nothing fancy. Uh, actually has a Frostbite, so it should probably mention that uh, needs to pay for that one. <laughs> yeah, I'll type that in really quick. Or maybe that Frostbite wasn't created from last turn. Did he flip up a nice card? Yeah, he, he flipped did. up Frostbank. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, he could, so he has to pitch, and then instead... Okay, so they took it back, and instead yeah. they're just stacking for three, we'll having two resources floating. Yep. Yeah, that's a little miss, uh, miss there. Could have maybe mid a rune chain or something, but, you know, still fine. It was going to be a really slow turn anyway, which is what you want to see. Uh, and then let's see what uh, CL does. Yep, it's going to be pretty disruptive. This might be the coveted... Tun this is what Tunic is for with your one extra one cost uh, attacks available. You're going to be able to throw out two attacks here. Yeah. Yeah, keeping the Ice Quake too, and keeping the Blizzard. Mm, this is going to be really nice. I think the order could have been a little bit different. Maybe, Maybe throwing out the Chilling Ice Bane first. Yep. Uh, it's It wouldn't have mattered too much because... Uh, the chain player would have had enough resources to pay twice, but Chilling Ice Vein does give the on-hit effect to every attack in the turn, uh, so it would have been a little bit uh, better to do it in that sequence, but I think this is still fine. Sleep Dart, not going to hit. It's going to be chain, going to be slowing down. All right. One consideration for doing it in this order is to maybe bait out blocks on Sleep Dart, because that's still a relevant effect, but if uh -huh. Chain doesn't know that Chilling Ice Vein is the next attack, then... 
the next attack, then Chilling Ice Vein coming after and actually hitting because he already committed to blocking the first attack might be a little better. Mm -hmm. But, well, then again, he can't fuse it. So, nor. <laughs> no, well, no, he can fuse it. He can fuse it. Oh, he can. Yeah, using the, uh, using oh, the, the tunic, tunic resource. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be three oh. plus a tunic. There's four exactly what you need. One for each arrow, and then two of Voltaire. And Chain's, Chain's going to lose this. Chain's going to lose a card. You can tell that and normally I, when I count to four, it's to uh, swing my hammer, not to do two <laughs> two arrows and fuse one of them. Oh, yeah, these Tales of Our Heroes make you want... To, ugh, they got to use every single resource available to them. <laughs> All right, let's, let's see, see maybe... Oh, whoa. That's a lot of hits. That is... Can you do anything with them with the blue in hands? Ooh, actually, the bounding demigons are definitely going to be stuck in there because they require a non-attack action card to be played. So, uh, you know, it's the, with the blue in hand can still really attack with ghostly visit and then attack for two with the Rosetta Thorn. So, you know, a casual six damage turn, but it's going to take two for that one. So these disruption effects really, yeah. really making you know showing the weaknesses or or more like the strengths of the Lexi deck. Wow, he's just going to take everything as well. Just going to try and keep disrupting. I think that's mostly correct. Yeah, Chain yeah, does have access to the Husk, and we'll probably see a Husk block on this turn, but even with all the... We'll see what how many Frostbites Asiel can push across the table. But I know isn't of that much of a barrier to get over for the Chain player. And it's not just the Frostbite tokens, too. It's showing a face-up Blizzard. Not only does he have to have enough resources to pay the frostbite, but he's going to have to have to pay two additional resources to continue its turn with the uh, blizzard just face up there. Wow. So is all about be... the intimidation <laughs> factor, leaving the blizzards and the lightning presses face up in the arsenal. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I think it's going to be the only attack. This is definitely going to be the only attack because of the way the reload mechanic works. And unfortunately, not having enough resources, that is a yellow chilling ice vein. Hmm. Yeah, so kind of maybe a missed opportunity to prevent some damage, but you know, still quite strong. Yeah, maybe realizing he doesn't have enough resources to. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, no, because he played Ice Quake and he had to play Ice Quake. Yep, and that's going to be the turn. So maybe a little bit of a missed opportunity of blocking with some extra card in hand, but we're going to see the power of Blizzard. Uh, stopping the turn, and then you know you love to see it. Look at that um, very red hand once again. Yeah, Chain might be in some trouble here if if his banish gets any more gummed up, and he can't pay for his things. He might be uh, in real worried about his blood debts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be a mix of that. Oof. I wonder if the players know the interaction between. Uh, the Soul Reaping here. So if Chad decides to play the Soul Reaping, you will. He can banish a card, uh, but he'll still have to pay one additional resources. I believe, pretty sure. So let's see what happens. Yep, has to pitch one to play the Plunder Run because if he doesn't do that, oh man, the Blizzard's gonna come in clutch here. If he doesn't do that, he can't play any of his cards. All the cards that he hasn't managed on require a non-attack to be played. So it's going to be very... Oh, it's going to be a very, very good turn to follow up as well. Yeah, and I think Chain needs to just uh, bait that Blizzard out so it's not just scary. It's uh -huh. not just uh, staring him down for the rest of the game. He definitely uh -huh. needs to clear out this Banish Zone, get that Blizzard out of the way, and hope to get a couple more good turns. I guess I didn't realize we have full, very good information. I see how I could be thinking about maybe if I play this Blizzard, uh, I could see no cards being taken out of the opponent's hand. It could be a blue, but I see how getting uh, pretty lucky here. The Blizzard, yeah, not going to let him do anything. He has another red in hand. It's going to be Arsenaling, taking four Blood Debt, really closing the lead. It's going to be great. All right. And there are the blue cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sleep Dart. Oof, gonna be 
a bit of a menace of a card. Voltaire. Yep, I wonder what the consideration is here. Maybe shooting Chilling Ice Vein just for the extra damage, not going to be able to fuse it. Uh, Endless Arrow is a little bit more threatening with the on hit effect. Uh, so, and then maybe wants to use up all the resources mm. appropriately. Nice, yep. And this is not threatening any on hit effect, so we could see yeah, Chad easily take this one. Yeah, so he could just be, like you said, trying to push as much damage through so the blood debt actually becomes a, a factor in Chad's turn. He might have to play inefficiently just to clear his Banish Zone. And he's got the Husk there that's just going to be sitting there for the rest of the game, putting a real clock on him. Exactly. This one is a must block because it does have the Captain's Call to be able to gain that extra leverage of the go again. And you now looking at the Chain Hand, Wow, it could be it could be still a really good turn even without the chain ability. So I wonder if he's considering that because he can easily captain skull with go again into flock of the feather walker, showing the other card, get that quicken token, play another one of their attacks from banner zone. Uh, but you know, five damage is you know not free. Uh, whew, it's gonna be a really yeah. close game. Yep, and there's this there's a decision to make sure that it has the hero ability. Still gonna be able to do a lot with these bounding demigods. And you know, we could see more stuff. We could see a, a state of the game Oh my god, another blizzard. <laughs> but anyway. Uh that that's gonna might be able to seal the deal here. But uh, what I was trying to mention is we could see a state of well, that's a lot about that. See a state of the game in which all the Lexi player has to do is block out for a few turns and chain is just yeah. gonna kill himself to blood debt because that is a lot yeah yeah there's very few ways to clear out the blood debt i feel clearing the blood debt is a lot harder now in these new chain decks where you don't have access to seeds which is a zero cost and you really got to watch that and manage it a lot more closely mm -hmm. yeah so this blizzard doesn't block anyway i think it's just going to be throwing it out uh, it doesn't really, with these bounding demigons costing zero, it's going to be really clutch, but they're not going to be a very big hindrance. And I think if Hasiel just blocks enough to survive and then has enough to make the, do a three of a kind turn, it's still going to be quite threatening. I think this one he might want to be setting up. Oof. Yeah. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and he's at nine health. Oof. Can't state this enough. Oof. That's there's definitely some oof happening, and I think if I was in Hostiel's shoes, I'd definitely just block with the three of a kind and, and let the blood dead happen, but maybe the risk is worth taking. And then what was that arsenal card that it does have uh, an endless arrow in Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and it's definitely not going to be, yep, going to be blocking with the tunic. Yeah, because that's it. Mm. I think, yep, you just eked out as much damage as you could. That's just three damage. You could block. Yep. Yep. It's just going to, I get this. Going to one, uh, I guess you could have a little fear of dying to inverted existence. Oh, wait, you can't die to inverted existence thanks to the spell void on Chalk Charmer. So it's kind of, kind of a free thing to just going to be pressure enough. Is that four life? Every attack is going to matter a lot here. All right, here we go. Going to be flipping it. Yep. So let's see some arrows. Nice. Some That's arrows. Blizzard bolt and the fuse material. Wow. This this is wow. This is going to be. While it's not going to be on fuse, I can really quickly see a. Oh, at least the frost lock is going to be fused. Wow, that's even that's even better. It's going to be a three arrow turn. It's going to be the Frost Lock, it's going to be the Blizzard Bolt, and then additionally it's going to be the Endless Arrow. I think it's, that's going to be way too much for the chain to overcome. <laughs> yeah, just reading the cards. If Chain did want to play the Art of War, he would have to do it a little bit before the Frost, by, uh, the frost Lock resolves, since it will cost one more if he wants to decide to do that. Hmm. What's Chain digging for if he plays the Art of War? 
uh, just more block because you could choose to banish the ghostly visit. Honestly, I don't think it's going to be enough. Uh, you know, Hasiel also putting himself after one life means that the... Oh, I was going to take a second. That's fine. Uh, so, Hasiel being at one life means that the second Skullcap block from Chain will never come to fruition. So, he's, what he has in hand is pretty much all he has. Yeah. That's definitely true. These these end games where Skullcaps are in play really open up the door for lots of shenanigans and lots of big brain maneuvers with uh, managing life the life totals. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. Yeah, uh, it's going to be Chad taking a second here, but yeah, it's, I feel like it's going to be way too much to overcome. Four attacks, going to be four, and then four again, and then four again. Yeah. And then Chain can't just uh, not block this or take a little bit of chip damage because uh, if he decides to block with one card in hand, it could open up the avenue to just have a Chalk Charmer's kill. So yeah. everything gets thrown at him, at least from the beginning. He already knows that he has a blue card in hand uh, and it has no floating. So this is at minimum uh, two Chalk Charmer's activations. Yep. So letting one through is would be very disastrous. Mm -mm. See how he converts these. Swan at zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not only does he have to choose about doing Frostlock because of the effect of the plus one, but I believe the Frostlock effects happen immediately when it gets hit. So if he wants to, for some reason, play an extra one to play Art of War later, can't pitch the they can't pitch the Malarian skies. And yes, that here it is, the Art of War play. Yeah, so he's going to play the Art of War. I think, like you said, he's going to dig for some attacks and uh, give his attacks plus one defense and see if that can hold out. Uh -huh. If he does survive this turn and somehow does play cards out of his uh, blood debt, Asiel is on one. He does have to block uh, every attack. but. Oh. Yeah, so this is this is a great threshold. That uh, three turns to a four, so Frostlock does get uh, stopped. Okay. Yep. Then he just has the Elsers go again. Chooses this for four. Yep. And I think this is the nail in the coffin. Showing that other attack. Yeah. It's gonna take a moment for Chat to realize that. Yeah, I got with two blocks. You can definitely block this out with every card in hand. Then. Not only could he die to endless arrow, he could just like Hasiel could be <laughs> very fancy and just pass a turn and let let Chad die to blood debt. <laughs> that would be There's... some. Uh, that would be fairly fancy, but. <laughs> yep, that does it, and that it, exactly four. But well, there we go. The disruption wins. Disruption wins. Yeah, so we saw Hasiel take a lot of damage this game, but he was steadfast in in getting those frostbites getting those tax effects through, getting some discards through. Um, his idea was just uh, prevent Chain's game plan. I guess the damage he took evened out in the end with how gummed up Chain's blood debt got. And even though he wasn't uh, winning maybe on turn cycles early, he, he just made it so that Chain couldn't manage his blood debt. I think that was the nail in the coffin. Yep. I wouldn't say that one of the key cards there was going to be Blizzard and... You know, we did see Chain get a lot of red hands there, to be fair as well. Yes. Uh, but Blizzard really was, I would say, the MVP there, making pay two extra resources on top of the other resource uh, kind of denial that the Lexi player was using with the extra frostbites. And just really kind of all came together to shut down the chain. Yep. Yeah, I totally agree. Blizzard is huge. Frostbites are huge. This frost lock was huge. <laughs> uh, everything lined up and three of a kind. Echoing the everything you said and all those red hands. Just a rough game all around, but mm -hmm. life totals were still close in the end, and it was a great game yeah. to watch. The only life point that matters is that last one, right? Very true. <laughs> so yeah, that's gonna be it for the games, right? Yeah, so thanks everyone for watching uh, these two games. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment, maybe you want to see some other matchups. Uh, but yeah, we appreciate you guys.
Peace.